Hey, what's going on, guys? It's KS here, and I'm back again with another Roblox Switching tutorial. This is going to be a remake of uh, a couple of my uh, videos I made probably over a year ago at this point. Um, I was using a, uh, I want to say, a terrible laptop at the time, and I was just using the mic that was built into it, so the audio quality and the video quality was terrible. So um, a lot of people have had uh, troubles making out what I was saying or um, having troubles making out what was being typed on the screen, so I uh, just wanted to make a an update to this uh, this tutorial. So we're just gonna get straight into it. I have a basic leader stat script here, and it will just basically just display a cache stat on the player list. Um, and let me show you what that looks like uh, for those of you uh, who, for some reason, don't know what I mean. Um, this right here, or you know, still beginners. Um, Basically, I'm going to be showing two ways to do this. I'm going to show how to do it with a GUI, and then I'm going to show how to do it with a part. So, uh, I'll put a, um, I'll split this video up uh, into two parts, not like two different videos, but this section here is going to be showing the part, and the other section after this will be uh, with a GUI. So, I'll start with the part. You're going to place the part inside of uh, the uh, workspace, and... Um, you can do anything as long as it's a part, and you can place a click detector in it. Um, I was going to name this CD for, uh, you know, convenience, and I'll do a script. And in this script, uh, we're going to grab the click detector, so we'll do local uh, CD is equal to script.parent.cd. Um, and we'll do cd dot uh, mouse click connect function. And if I remember correctly, it's player. I haven't really used click detectors in quite a bit, so it's kind of trying to go off of my memory here. <laughs> um, so you're going to want it to, so basically you pass, when you click the part, uh, it tells you which player clicked the part, so I could just be like, hey, print player.name, and it will print out the player that clicked the part. So let me just show you that real quick. I go over and click the part. Hey, I clicked the part. Yay. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to look for leader stats, so I'll just do uh, ls is equal to player um, colon find first child leader stats and um, and then we'll do local uh, cache is equal to ls find first child cache alright so now that we got that out of the way we can be like hey if uh, ls and uh, cache or whatever. I guess you don't have to do this, but uh, you know, just just to have out there, I guess. Um, be like, hey, if both of these are found, then um, we'll do cache dot value is equal to cache dot value um, plus I don't know five five cache. So now when we go to click this part. You can be like, yep, there we go. We got five cache every time we click it. Now, if you want to add a delay to it, um, we can add a debounce. So local uh, db is equal to false. We got preset that above, and um, I guess we can do it if not uh, db and ls and cache, and then uh, db is uh, equal to true. And let's say wait about, I don't know, 0 0.5 seconds. Uh, and then we can set db is equal to false after that. So there is a half second delay uh, cooldown for your clicking for cache here on this part. As you can see, I'm clicking repeatedly and it is having that nice uh, cooldown on it. So um, 
I'm going to go ahead and copy this section right here, and I will use this in the next uh, section of this video. Um, I'm just going to modify it a little bit, because uh, this is almost the same for uh, the button, uh, but I don't like it on the screen. So we're going to go ahead and uh, place a, uh, a remote event inside of the server I mean the uh, replicate storage. I'm gonna name it. Um, oh, I'll just call it clicked, because this is an actual game. I'm just showing you how to get, uh, showing you guys how to do something. And we're gonna go ahead and inside of a server script, inside of server script service, uh, we're gonna grab the replicate storage. Uh, RS is equal to game get service replicate storage, and then we'll do local event is equal to RS wait for child uh, clicked. And this is where I said uh, I was saying maybe we can use this code. Um, we do event dot on server event connect uh, function, and uh, by default it passes over to player on a server event. And I'm gonna paste in this code here. I'm um, just gonna go ahead and remove the function part of it because that's not necessary. But we are gonna need this. So. Uh, let me add a debounce in this here, so we'll go called db is equal to false. Alright, so this would literally just do the same thing. Um, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, just take out the delay for the uh, for a sec there. And so now that we got the server event out of the way, um, as you can see, uh, it's literally the same code as uh, this right here, but inside of a different function. Alright, so to uh, pass it over from the client, we're going to be uh, putting a screen GUI in, and then we're going to put in a text button. Well, I'm going to use a text button, at least you guys can use whatever button you want. I'm just going to put it in the bottom right, just make it like nah, that small. Um, and uh, we don't need to really do anything to it, I'm just going to put a local script inside of it. And a local uh, button, btn, whatever, is equal to script.parent. And button dot mouse button one click connect function and uh, got to import the replicate storage so the local RS is equal to game get service replicate storage and uh, local uh, event is equal to RS wait for child uh, clicked and then we'll add a, a DB in here is equal to false. Okay, so now we can get into the function. So when the button is clicked, um, with the uh, left button on the mouse, so your standard button click, um, so when you're clicking on things like I'm doing now, um, when someone clicks on the button, uh, basically we're going to want to be like, hey, if not db, and, or if not db, then uh, db is equal to true, and then we'll do event colon fire server, and literally that's all we gotta do for that line, and then we can obviously add in a wait, uh, you know, so I'll just do a 0 0.1 for this one, and db is equal to false. So this is with a, uh, a tenth of a second cooldown. Um, this will basically, what it'll do is when you click the button on the screen right here, uh, it will check, hey, uh, is debounce active? If if not, then hey, we gotta set debounce to true, and it's activated. We gotta fire the event off to the server, and then wait the, the, uh, the specified cooldown time before setting it back to false and deactivating the cooldown. Alright. So here we go. Same thing as this but uh, uh, this over here, with a half second cooldown, but with a tenth of a second over here. And as you can see, a little faster because of the uh, different delay, but it does the same exact thing. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. Um, hopefully it's <laughs> a lot better than the other two videos I recorded on this same topic. And I thought you know it'd be a lot better to record both these in one video because um, you know they're pretty much the same thing, but with two different techniques. Uh, one is using a click detector and a part, the other one is using a screen GUI and passing an event off to the server. So, 
um, yeah, just thought I'd get this out here, and uh, see you guys in the next video, and uh, peace.